Space Camp and the drink break and the hiking and the technique is very important. So at the same time, technique with the, if we have a, a little knowledge about the walking meditations, so it's really benefits to hike along with the gentle and yeah, for hiking in a high, so we no need to rush, we slowly going. So we can put there like uh, in the point of Buddhism, there are two different kind of meditations uh, like Shamatha and Vipassana. Shamatha is like fundamentals uh, technique for the practitioner. So mostly basis on the physical activities like walking, train our organs and bodies. Uh, so when we walk, the basis of the Shamatha, we walk slowly and at the same time like Vipassana, there are mostly uh, um, mental levels, thought need, need to be there, like concentrations and awareness, mindfulness, all the Vipassana. And at the same time, Shamatha, we need a physical uh, activity. So combined with these two, when we walk slowly, slowly and slowly, so take a breath, slowly, slowly. So we concentrate uh, on the breath as well, uh, our leg and the hand, whatever movements there. So just think the moments, just be with the moments and don't go to the future and destinations and don't rush don't push too much on self so be with moments and that's really uh, helpful like shamatha when we moving then we really concentrate on our physical so we know how our physical is working and it's just go just go like gently don't push your body so hard it's just let go of them just think uh vipassana way inside at the same time, shamatha way, the body movement. So these two comb uh, combinations make really uh, hiking beautiful, better, less tired, uh, less uh, breathtaking, less sweaty. So it's really helpful in a mountains hiking. Hello friends, Christopher Hobbs here, high in Nepal at probably almost 13,000 feet. And here we are in the sacred juniper forest. Uh, juniper is from the genus Uniperus or Juniperus, and it's a conifer. It looks like it has berries. Here are the dark cones. These are actually cones from a gymnosperm. So juniper is related to fir, and pine and and larch and other conifers and you can see the leaves are very oppressed very uh, hugging the stem like that and scale like and and so these are the ripe cones and and uh, the green cones are used the ripe cones the fronds uh, all of those parts are used in traditional medicine and you can really say with confidence that juniper is a sacred plant sacred medicine and even in, in California, where I live, we have some giant old juniper trees that literally are a thousand years old, maybe more, big giant junipers. And the Native Americans harvested the berries. They would dry them. Uh, when They're actually really resinous and really strong tasting when they're green. But as soon as they dry, as soon as they ripen up like this and get dark, then they become sweet. So there's a little piquancy from the from the juniper oils uh, and resins and then you get all this sweet flesh in there and and so they pound that and they make pemmican so that's that's basically their power bar so they pound pound uh, the juniper berries and they put maybe huckleberry and other berries in there and then maybe some uh, seeds and they grind it all up and that's how we got our idea for for power bars i'm sure so that's pemmican uh, in in uh, Nepali culture, this is very much a sacred tree. They harvest the berries and they especially harvest the fronds and dry it out. They use it in temples for smudge, for purification. Uh, as, and as far as medicine, Native Americans 
used it, Europeans used it. The, the species that is the most official one is Juniperus communi, uh, so common uh, in, in North America, Europe. And here we've got another species of juniper, and there, there are several here in Nepal. And this one is so aromatic, and you could actually simmer it and make, uh, make a strong juniper tea, put it in your bath, it, it increases circulation. Uh, it really, and, and it purifies, it has a purifying nature overall. And so we could talk about the deeper spiritual aspects of juniper, but it's really true that in, in life, if we choose to get connected with nature, with trees, uh, uh, with the flowers and the plants, that we really uh, can see them as allies, not something to, to utilize and, and, uh, and just take what we, we want without giving back. And so these are really, really plant allies, plant spirit allies, and juniper is one of the most powerful. And for me, I really um, call in my allies when I have a difficult time, or if I am, um, you know, out of sorts, or I'm depressed maybe, or I'm, I'm undergoing a, a great challenge, I call my spirit allies in, and those are the trees and the plants and, and nature. And, and I always feel so, so cared for, so loved when I'm connected to nature, because after all, we are part of nature and we're an integral part and we're not separate from nature. And so um, I invite you to just pay more attention uh, when you're walking to the plants and the flowers and the trees and get to know them and really make a connection, really form that uh, allyship. And, and what we're giving back is we're going to take care of them. We're going to take care of their, of their habitat and we're not going to burn so much fossil fuels or throw plastic in the forest. So we have our part in the relationship and also the, the nature and the trees and the flowers and the plants can give so much back to us in oxygen and, and medicine. Thanks for watching. This is Primula from the genus Primula. We're in the a Nepali forest here with junipers and fir and lots of rhododendrons. And here's this gorgeous Primula. Primrose is the common name. It grows all over Europe, North America, and Asia as well. So it's pretty widespread. You can see these bell-like flowers here and the toothed leaves that are very large. And so in, it's, it's used as a garden plant all over the world, an ornamental, because of its beauty. And it comes in different colors, but typically yellow is, is uh, commonly seen. And it's a very good medicine plant. And so in traditional medicine, European medicine and Asian medicine, the root and the leaves were used, especially for coughs. And so if you take a little piece of this leaf here and you chew it, um, I, I better not do it now because then I'll start coughing probably. So it really, it's a little bit acrid, it's a little bit dissolving to the mucus, so you can chew it and it starts dissolving the mucus and you get it up and you can get rid of it. And you can also make a tea of the roots or the leaves, either one, but it's, it's widely respected throughout probably 2,000 years for a respiratory tract. Anyway, so now we are here at Dibuti in the Everest area. My sub Siva Deputa. So this plant uh, is Primula sicimensis. This is a highly medicinal plant, and mainly the Tibetan medicine practitioner in Dolpa area. They are called Amtis. They use this plant mainly for fever and diarrhea. And also, it is also regarded as a cooler plant. Right. In Dolpa. I, I haven't heard anything from this area, but I am very sure that Amtis in Dolpa, they use this plant very much. Now what part do yes. they use? The root or the leaves typically? I think roots. Uh, let me take uh, uh, flowers. Sorry. Flowers. They use flowers. Ah. Yeah, yeah. They use flowers to treat diarrhea and even for uh, fevers of the lungs and blood. Excellent. Mainly the flower parts. This is only the yellow color primula in this Everest area. Only a yellow one. Yeah, yeah yellow rest, one. Rest under. Yeah, <coughs> and I also want to say that the classic European medicine is is Primula vera of the field, vera or Primula of the fields, Primula or spring, Primula vera, vera meaning spring. Okay. So because they do bloom pretty early in the spring. Yeah. In some places. Okay. Thanks.
And just to add that in Everest area, we could find about 12 primulae species in Everest area. We will see several on our way. This is an incredible place to be here. So we did just find a species that's a little bit more difficult to identify. I think DNA analysis is the yeah. only way that it's going to be done, but it's a beautiful little polypore here. And it's actually growing on this, what I would Junipers. categorize as almost an old growth juniper. And I think it's a good moment to reflect upon. For one, is there a certain type of medicine that's inside of this that we don't know of just yet or needs to be studied? But also this is just another good moment to note why it is that we're actually going out into this ecosystem and identifying these species of mushrooms mm -hmm. because you need to in order to understand the ecosystem or preserve the ecosystem but sometimes it's difficult for people who know less about mycology to understand why we're doing this so why is it that we would go out into this ecosystem and identify these species okay yeah i have seen several sorts of species yeah in our forest in nepal and as you said, we need uh, taxonomic studies. And for the moment, we need, uh, we need to do sequencing mm -hmm. of the, this kind of all the species which we could find in forest. And nice to know about their potentiality for medicinal purposes and other purposes. It's really great to know. And we, we have several sorts of species. We need to explore, we need to sequence, and we need to really to get their correct scientific names. Sure. Yeah, and then for further for the observation or conservation or preservation or usage or whatever. Yeah, we need to have the correct taxonomic identification. Yeah, and it takes a while. I it mean, takes a while. and this is one of the places that's been less identified. So yeah, that's the reason for this trip. Tell us what it is. Jastrum species, or star as you would call them in English, and uh, it looks like a lycoperdon. The spores are produced inside the fruiting bodies. And if you press a little bit on the mushroom, oh. the spore will Geastrum. grow out of the fruiting body. Wow, it looks like smoke. And it's a nice Amazing. adaptation. So when there is like raindrops falling on the mushroom, like that, you just release the spores. Hallo, ich grüße euch. Ich will euch ein bisschen erzählen von Geastrum Secatum, der Erdstern. Es ist ein Heilpilz, den wir gerade hier auf über 4000 Meter gefunden haben in Nepal. Und ich habe ein wunderschönes Bild von dem Mittel von meinem Kollegen bzw. Lehrer Robert Dale Rogers, einer der führenden Mykologen in Kanada. Der hat daraus eine Essenz, also ein sozusagen wie die Bachblüte, hat er mit den Sporen eine Heil, ein Heilmittel hergestellt und ein Arzneimittelbild und hat es klinisch über 20 Jahre verwendet. Und also es gibt uns eine Einsicht in die Seele von diesem wunderbaren Mittel. Wir wissen, dass es Krebs heilen kann, dass es sehr viele Antioxidantien in sich trägt, sehr viele Beta-Glucane, was immunregulierend ist und immunstimulierend. Aber was ist die Seele von dem Mittel? Nach Robert Dale Rogers geht es um das Thema Sucht. Aber was suchen wir? Was ist das, was uns dazu führt, Alkohol oder Marihuana oder Kokain oder wie diese Substanz, wie sie, die Substanz heißt? Für ihn geht es darum, in seinem Bild oder für den Erdstern, Mensch, der in diesem Zustand ist, es geht um die Suche nach ein gutes Gefühl, nach Freude, nach Verbundenheit. Eine Verbundenheit, die verloren gegangen ist in eine sehr materialistische, technische Situation, Kultur, Lebensweise, wo wir nicht mehr uns verbunden fühlen mit Mutter Erde und mit der Natur, die uns Kraft gibt und die uns beseelt. Das öffnet die Tür zu allen möglichen Süchten und nach seinem Bild geht es sehr um 
das Vermeiden von Schmerz und das Vermeiden von dem inneren Prozess. Und Erdstern gibt uns die Kraft, den inneren diesen inneren Stern zu finden, den inneren, inneren Prozess zu machen, den Schmerz zu begegnen, selbstverständlich mit Begleitung, selbstverständlich mit der Hilfe von der göttlichen Kraft, mit Begleitung von einer professionellen Begleitung, die äh, ein Therapeuten oder ein Homöopathen sein kann, um durch diesen Prozess erfolgreich durchzugehen und wieder diese Verbindung zu finden mit dem inneren Stern, der verbunden ist mit dem ganz großen Stern, was uns der Stern, der uns Orientierung gibt in unserem Leben. Musik